in about 1955, I was um, chairman, no, it must have been, yeah, 1955. I guess I was chairman at that time of the math department. And we had a visitor from India who was a, a college president over there. And he came here and one of the things he wanted to do was to visit Einstein. So he came with a beautiful hand carved flamingo uh, made out of buffalo horn and he wanted to give it to Einstein. Well anyway, he went to our president and our president brought him over to me and said, how would you like to visit Einstein on Saturday and introduce Dr. Mani to Dr. Einstein? And I said, no, I don't think that's a good idea. And he said, why not? And I said, well, he's too busy to be bothered by meaningless uh, meetings of this type. So they were both disappointed and they left. And about a, an hour later, Dr. West, our president, came back and said, Bill, I've made arrangements for you on Saturday morning. I made an appointment for you at the Institute for Advanced Study to visit Einstein. And I thought, well, I don't want to belabor my point. So, And as long as Dr. West did that for me, I thought the least I could do is follow through. So we got there Saturday morning, and his receptionist spoke with a pretty strong German accent. And um, she said, no, I have no record of any appointment having been made. Mm -hmm. Am I so I said, that's, that's awful, because I know our president wouldn't lie to me. And uh, she said, well, anyway, he's too busy today. He can't see anyone. So by this time, my dander was aroused, and I wanted to go in then. <laughs> so Dr. Mani and I went to the side and planned our strategy, and we reapproached the, the receptionist, and she said, well, I would like to let you in, but I know he's too busy today, so we just can't do it. So we went away and sat down and reworked our strategy and went back to the lady and finally she said this was the first sign of weakness <laughs> on her part. She said to Dr. Mani, are you a physicist? And Dr. Mani said, yes, yes I am. And she said, well okay, go in but don't stay more than 20 minutes. So we went in and at the end of about 40 or 50 minutes I said to Dr. Einstein, well, thank you very much for your time, but I think we have to go. We've overextended our time. And he said, oh, no, he said, sit down, sit down. He said, I'm enjoying this. So naturally, we were flattered, yeah. and we sat down, and we talked some more. And he talked about so many things. And I remember three or four of the main things. In his thought, the biggest problem facing the world is the food problem. This was in the middle 1950s. And he said, uh, the population is growing much faster than the food production is growing. And therefore, there will be a, a real problem. And. Uh, I never thought of it just that way, but I, I can see where he probably was right. Oh, that thing, well, I won't get into that. And then, along the lines of education, and you'll be interested in this, Matthew, he said, in this trouble, in this country, the trouble with education is everybody is just learning to just get good grades. He said, learning should be uh, fun. The objective of learning ought to be to learn something and enjoy doing it. 
And he said, that's, what's, that's how it's done in Europe. And in this country, it's not done that way. I don't believe They're all it. fighting to get grades. I don't believe it. And, uh, of course, I thought he was right there, too. But Rosemary did. Right <laughs> what, Rose? They're not any different from us. They're not any different from us, those young people. They want to make a good life, make a li good living. Yeah, but uh, they yeah. also uh, appreciate knowledge a little well, bit more than we do. Diane, and then there were two or three other wrong. things that he uh, <laughs> uh, 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 harped on. Right now I can't think of them. And then eventually Dr. Money said, uh, Dr. Einstein, I have something for you. And with that he got out his duffel bag and he had something wrapped up in newspapers. It was the flamingo. And he handed it to Dr. Einstein. Dr. Einstein said, you know, it's beautiful, but I can't accept it. And Dr. Money said, why? Yeah. Einstein said, well, I've done nothing for you and it wouldn't be right for me to accept a present from you. Mm. So Dr. Money thought real fast. He said, well, you can do something for me. And Einstein said, what's that? And Dr. Money said, I would like to have an autograph photograph of you. You can do that for me and I'll do this for you. <laughs> so Dr. Einstein said, yes, I'll see too that you get one. And then he turned to me and said, would you like to have one too? And I almost said no. <laughs> Any time. Well, you know, I've never been a hero worshiper. Yeah, right. And I right. remember once as a little boy, I went to see Babe Ruth play at Jersey City in the International League. And I was standing right by the right field fence. And at the start of one of the innings, Ruth walked over to the fence and started to talk to people. And people wanted autographs. And he came to me and said, don't you want an autograph? I said, no, thank you. I <laughs> <laughs> <Would> you believe. <laughs> kicking myself ever since. <laughs> Isn't that something? If I had a picture, I mean, an autograph of Babe Ruth, and, uh, and to go with my picture with Einstein next to each other. Where is your picture with Einstein? I didn't see it. Oh, right behind you. that uh, bureau. And it's